could an everyday night at home turn into a terrible nightmare? We explore the complex story behind Sarah Widmer's heinous death and the unsettling questions that remain. Was it a case of accidental drowning or something far more sinister? Let's go into the heartbreaking story that captivated a town and put a husband's destiny in the balance. Sarah, an energetic 24-year-old dental hygienist, and her husband Ryan, 27, had a relaxing evening together, welcoming the delights of married life. Their shared hopes of creating a future together, full with plans for travel and companionship, portrayed a picture of married bliss. But behind the surface, evil appeared, ready to consume their ideal lives. What truths hide underneath their seemingly flawless appearance? Ryan and Sarah Widmer enjoyed leftover hamburgers, corn on the cob, and cheesy potatoes in front of the television on August 11th. They started with some of Sarah's favorite shows before watching a football game. Sarah later chose to unwind by taking a bath in the main bedroom's bathroom. Ryan remembered Sarah requesting him to check the doors before he joined her upstairs, and they both expressed their love before she walked upstairs on her tiptoes. Was Ryan's explanation of events as clear as it appeared, or were there hidden facts waiting to be revealed? At 10.49 p.m., Ryan dialed 911 and the call lasted seven minutes. He told the dispatcher that his wife had fallen asleep in the shower at their house in Morrow, Ohio, and described the situation. What happened in those terrifying seven minutes as Ryan urgently sought to explain the tragedy of seeing Sarah dead in the bathtub? Ryan followed the dispatcher's instructions and removed Sarah from the bathtub before doing CPR. He temporarily put down the phone and drained the tub before lifting Sarah, which took around 29 seconds. The cops arrived within six minutes of receiving the 911 call and discovered Sarah naked on the bedroom floor. Sarah's body felt warm and dry, but her hair was wet while the cops performed CPR, revealing a pinkish-white foamy discharge from her lips and nose, indicating drowning. What happened that provided the medical professional's failure to maintain Sarah's condition, which ended in her tragic death? Paramedics, upon arrival, made two unsuccessful attempts to intubate Sarah in the bedroom. Two additional attempts were made during the 10-minute journey to the hospital in the ambulance. Despite a fifth unsuccessful intubation, a sixth attempt by the emergency room physician at the hospital proved successful. Still, it was too late, and Sarah was pronounced dead that same night. Despite Ryan's assertion to the police that he found Sarah in the bathtub and believed she'd fallen asleep, law enforcement grew suspicious upon arriving at the house. During the investigation, cops found oddities that raised suspicions. The bathroom floor, mat, and towel were dry, with only a few drips in the tub. No wet towels were found. Ryan said he watched football downstairs, but the TV wasn't on that channel. It was in the bedroom. Bloodstains were found where Sarah was found. These inconsistencies made Ryan's story shaky. Was he really just a grieving husband, or was there more to it? Sarah's investigation was done by Dr. Russell Upgrove, the Warren County coroner, and revealed that the cause of death was drowning. The examination revealed several physical injuries, including faint bruising on the right side of her forehead, a petechial hemorrhage on the inner surface of her eyelid, bruising on the left side of her neck, a discoloration on the back of her neck, an abrasion on her left armpit, and bruising and lacerations on her upper lip. Sarah had severe muscle hemorrhaging in the front of her neck, as well as scalp contusions. But who could be responsible for such a heinous act? And what possible motive could they have had? The decision by Dr. Upgrove to describe Sarah's death as murder shocked the town, leaving many in awe and confusion. The discovery that Sarah's injuries happened before her death complicated an already puzzling situation. How could such brutality happen within the walls of a normal home? Sarah's test findings showed the absence of illegal drugs and alcohol in her system. Remarkably, Ryan was arrested for aggravated murder on August 13, 2008, just two days after Sarah's death. The prosecution claimed that Sarah drowned, and while the cause of her death was undeniable, how she died was the focus of the trial. How did she drown? The prosecution maintained that the evidence acquired from the 911 call, the crime location and Sarah's injuries, all pointed to Ryan as the perpetrator of her death. Their main point of dispute was that he purposefully kept her underwater, causing her to drown in the bathtub. Throughout the inquiry, law enforcement authorities investigated the bathtub for fingerprints, which revealed streak marks believed to be made by human hands, mainly in the center of the tub. They used a superglue fuming procedure and reflected ultraviolet imaging to identify finger and smear marks. An imprint like a forearm was found on the bathtub, and forensic research determined that it belonged to an adult male. But can these investigative results bring the breakthrough they badly need? 
The prosecution said Ryan purposely dunked Sarah's head underwater until she drowned. Building on this claim, they argued that Ryan should be held responsible for her murder. In response, the defense argued that there was insufficient evidence to substantiate the charge that Ryan was responsible for Sarah's death. They emphasized the couple's obvious affection and insisted that Ryan had no discernible reason to hurt Sarah. Notably, Coroner Upgrove described how Sarah's dry body and damp hair might result from a head being pushed over the edge of a bathtub, toilet, or sink. This motion might have occurred either forward or backwards in moving water or when wholly immersed. But would their defense be enough to sway the jury's verdict? The defense responded to these allegations by engaging medical professionals to question and refute the defense's accusations. Sarah's co-workers' testimonials provided more insights into her health and daily routine. They described Sarah resting in a car before starting work in the morning and using lunch breaks to relax in a car. Colleagues said that she suffered from allergies and regularly experienced headaches and stomach troubles. On one occasion, her migraines were so severe that she couldn't see, forcing her to take refuge in a dark room until the symptoms subsided. Dr. Benjamin Mesmer, a dentist at Sarah's office, gave evidence regarding the day she died. He confirmed her complaints of a headache and stomach ache on that specific day. Sarah's acquaintances said that she had a habit of nodding asleep in unexpected situations, such as during games or group chats. Could Sarah's health issues shed light on her untimely demise, or were they merely distractions from the truth? On the other hand, Sarah's mother, Ruth Ann Stewart, testified for the prosecution. She insisted that she'd never observed anything unusual about her daughter's sleeping habits. Ruth attributed Sarah's intermittent migraines to potential sinus difficulties. According to Ruth's evidence, she spoke with Sarah on the day she died while she was driving home from work, and Sarah made no mention of having a headache. Ruth emphasized the lack of a family history of seizures, heart illness, or cardiac issues. Despite these arguments, Ryan was ultimately convicted of murder and sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. Notably, a juror from the third trial emphasized Ryan's courtroom demeanor as a significant factor in the guilty verdict. The juror highlighted Ryan's lack of reaction during the presentation of autopsy photos, suggesting that this emotional detachment played a role in shaping the perception of his guilt. The Sarah Widmer case is a story with hints of mystery, forensic science, and plenty of courtroom drama. The story begins with the shocking death of a young woman and her family's decade-long search for justice. As questions linger and debates continue, the case of Sarah Widmer remains a haunting reminder of the complexities and challenges of the criminal justice system. Now, as we conclude this gripping journey into the Sarah Widmer murder case, subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more captivating stories like this one. Hit that like button and don't forget to leave a comment sharing your thoughts and insights. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to having you with us in our future explorations.